I want to show off the new Christie suspension system, which is a, a big change from our original one. The new suspension has a lot of advantages to it. There are now four roller assemblies, and I could show you this assembly up close here. Um, it's a fairly simple mechanism. It starts off with the single bearing, and then another bearing is added, and some other simple hardware. And from there, um, we create our component one, it's its own component now, the roller, and it's followed by the arm, which holds that roller, and now it's being held on both sides. These other features really just carve out a space for the bearing, and so that the bearing um, is not rubbing against the plastic, there is a bit of a recess in there, as you can see. And I can also show you, on the other side, there's a pocket for the um, another bearing, and the nut. So we have this gap here, and I'll show you what that's used for soon. But first, um, I want to show you the connector for the uh, shock absorber. And we have the two holes inside, and then um, a little bit more hardware for connecting the barrel to the arm, and just a couple of other connections here before basically just wrapping it up. And there is a gap here just to allow some, some play and some give in the roller. So if I go back to my assembly, my new assembly, you'll see that I have four of these rollers attached to the body and they're being attached from two bearings that sit inside a pocket inside the body. So let, let me show you quickly what that looks like. I'm just gonna do a cross section here and as you can see, there are two bearings inside the body which hold the um, bolt uh, perpendicular to the body surface. And it allows for some really great cylindricity all the way through the entire assembly. So hopefully that's understandable. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any questions on this. I know um, it got a little bit more complicated than the original one. I want to show you the actuation and the ability to um, test the movement and the movement limits. If I click on the screw or one of these faces, I could actually move and rotate the actuating arm and my shock absorber, this is the shock absorber, this gray piece. There's no spring in it, but that's fine. We're just looking at the shock absorber itself. You can see that it's uh, connected axially to this hole and it's connected axially to um, this section right here with this hole. I came down to my object visibility and turned on my joint origins and my joints so that you can see them clearly here in the assembly model. Now, if I go and right click on any of these axial uh, dimensions, I can go and select edit joint limits. And what that's gonna allow me to do is it's a make some uh, limits on how much this can rotate. So I could set a minimum and a maximum. And if I click on minimum, it's just gonna ask me what angle do you want for the minimum rotation and what's your maximum rotation. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. And as you could see, I set up the um, rotation so that it can only rotate between two degrees and 54 degrees, um, which sets this face to not touch this face during rotation. And of course, as you would imagine, this is allowed to rotate as much as it pleases. And doing so has allowed me to really test the actual range of motion as it will happen in the real model when it's built. So as you can see, there are some cutouts that I know I mentioned a few minutes ago. The reason why they're here is because this arm, when it moves upward, has some room to continue and it can continue uh, past the um, point here of where uh, this face would be. So usually you would only be able to move up to say here, but with the cutout and with the play, uh, because this wheel will actually be moved in a little bit because of the play, you can move this all the way up until it touches, which would not happen. 
So you can see that there's a lot more distance for it to rotate. So that being said, um, this particular um, rotator is a little bit limited with the space that it has for adding a um, suspension uh, shock absorber. So what I did was I added the shock absorber and attached it here to the top. And I can still move it up and down, but it's a lot more limited and it can actually hit this piece. So this one is kind of um, much more limited and the use of the joint limits doesn't really apply because I know that it's going to hit this before it hits the actual cylinder of the shock absorber. So that's just kind of the tool that I've used to uh, determine its rotation limits. For those wondering about the rest of the tread, the same tread method will be used just like in the last one. So as you can see, we have our number 25 roller chain, two of them, two loops, um, both being wound around the limits of the suspension system. Uh, there are now gonna be two sprockets used. So there's one sh sprocket shown here, but there is also another sliding one here. And uh, again, it will have the same uh, links as before. And in the next video, I hope to show you the built 3D printed version of this tank assembly.